Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I'm a GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and the president of Bigman Geophysical. And the giggling behind you is my daughter, Eliana, who is today, on this break from school, my videographer. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick start video of the Finder from Sensors and Software. This is also the LMX150. So this is the Finder LMX150 from Sensors and Software. And we're just gonna go through and show you how easy the system is. So to get started in putting the system together, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take out your two clamps right over here. All right, you're just gonna put the uh, handlebars on. You just slip them on. And then you just pop these clamps back in. They're really, really simple uh, to put in here. All right, next we're gonna strap in our battery. This is the battery, it sits here on a little ledge. And basically we're just gonna strap that in. Now this is good. And then finally, over on the side here, see we're going to, this way, um, plug in the battery. And so this just goes right into the battery here. You can see there's a little arrow and that just goes into where it says push. Which I'll thread it through right here. Okay, so the only last thing we have to do is actually take the data collector, which is here. You just slide it in underneath. And there it is, it's in. And then finally, we're gonna plug in the data collector to the radar. So this is the data collector. The antenna is down here on the bottom. And the neat thing about the Finder LMX150 is it's a 500 megahertz antenna. So all of the rest of the LMX series are 250 megahertz. And those have been around for a long time. This is a newer system that actually went up in frequency to give you a little bit uh, more clear picture, a crisper picture of the subsurface or an image. And so higher frequency, better resolution, uh, but it won't go as deep as the old LMX 100 and 200. I'll go ahead and close this up, move it out of our way. And then to get started, all you'll do is press the power, <laughs> the power button, all right? <laughs> It will wait till it turns on, and you can adjust this depending on how you want it. Sometimes if the sun's out like it is right now, um, you can put it, you know, more facing yourself, um, and so you don't get nearly as much glare from the sun. As so you can see, it's loading up now, right over here. And then once it's all loaded, it's a very simple set of options that are lined up on the bottom, okay? And so you'll have the ability to do a line scan, you'll have the ability to do a grid scan, you'll look at tools in your system and so forth. Um, and so you'll be able to do a few different things here, uh, but it's pretty easy to get started. It's actually the sensor software systems in general, but the LMX systems in particular are some of the easiest units to get started with. So here you go. You have just five options. You have project, right? So you'll select which project you want. You can go up in project or down in project, right? And we'll start with project one, line scan, grid scan, map view, which is currently grayed out, and then tools. And so in tools is here's where you would go if you're going to um, uh, calibrate the survey wheel, for example. So if you look at the bottom, okay, the back right wheel, you can see it has this little module. That's an odometer. So that's gonna, gonna regulate when the system puts out an actual signal. And so you can calibrate that to your site uh, conditions if you want and you'll see here system test odometer you can go in you can press odometer and then you can go ahead and calibrate that we have other videos on how to actually calibrate systems but what you would do is just lay out a measuring tape and then follow the instructions all right so we'll exit out of there if you have a gps here's where you can see if the gps has um an actual you know uh, a reading all right now it's failed because we don't have a gps so a GPS would be put in over here, right over here, if you're gonna use one. So this is the bracket that it comes with um, to mount the GPS. And so it's just an L bracket. It has 
you know, just one uh, thread through here. You just match that up. You stick your a little little uh, holder in, and that's it. And then your GPS just goes right onto this thread over here. And you just twist that on. And then this is sitting right on top of the middle of the antenna, so you don't have to do any corrections, uh, for any offsets for it. All right, so if you come back over here, right? So that's where you would go into uh, use tools for things like the GPS and the odometer uh, uh, and so forth, okay? If you want to change your units, you know, you can change your units. So for example, if you want to use, you know, feet, then you'd use your standard. If you want to use meters, you go to metric. It's your choice. That's where you do it all right here. All right, so then to really get started, it's very basic. We'll go over line scans real quick, but you go into line scan and you can, and so all we have to do is click start right in the corner here and it'll start collecting data. All right, I mean, once we start to push it. So it'll take a second to go ahead and get started up. And once this comes up, it's saying that we can move forward. So as we start to push forward, you see it's starting to collect data now. All right. And in here, when you stop, it gives you some options on the bottom. Okay, so I can zoom, right? I can zoom in and out. I can go less depth or I can go greater depth if I want. Okay, position, I can widen it out or I can shorten it if I want. Um, I can adjust my gains, right? So the gains are a little high here. But now you can see as I'm toning them down a little bit. So here is the bottom of the pavement. And then here is my uh, power line. And then down here is actually another line which is marked as power on the ground, but I think it's probably in abandoned water. Um, we've never seen power run through there. Um, you can also do your soil calibrations and so forth. If you press filter on and off, it's just gonna filter uh, with a background. And so you can get more aggressive, you know, as your numbers go higher. So that's off, that's a little bit aggressive, more, more. You can see it starts deforming the signal uh, more, and then that's the most aggressive. Um, generally, we suggest, you know, a, a, a non-aggressive filter. You can change colors as well, if you like. It's a user's choice. Standard is pretty, uh, typically going to be a grayscale uh, uh, series like this. All right, and if you want to do interpretations, you can go ahead and select whichever color you want. You stick it right on there. I'm going to use red because that's a power line, and that has my interpretation on it. All right, so we stop it. Now it stopped, and that data is uh, saved inside of here. So you go back, and it says it's now ready for line two. So there's a second mode in line scan. If we pull it back here, and we go again, and we'll start a little bit further back, uh, this time to get a little bit more perspective. But you can do a no-save mode. This is what's called LMX100 mode, which is where the data is not going to save. It's just going to allow you to do a locate and mark in real time. So when it comes back up, we start to push, and you can see data is getting collected. All right, so there's our power. There's our power line again, right over here. Keep going. And then we have this other uh, really subtle response uh, towards the bottom right here, All right? So we can gain up if we want as well, you know, see what we see, All right? And so that's pretty good. Now, if I want to do a hyperbola fit on this, I can just press soil calibration. And you can see I can just move it to where I want. And now I can just either do a micro adjustment using the soil cal up and down, or I can do uh, major adjustments using this media button. Okay, right? So that's too narrow, that's too wide. And so that's, you know, pretty close. And now I could just use micro adjustments uh, to adjust it, all right? And if I kind of just move it a little bit, and I can use these buttons as well, uh, to help move it. So that looks pretty good, all right? And so if it's different than what we started at, we press apply, and now it has adjusted our uh, um, set of values on the side for depth because now it's calibrated to the actual site conditions.
All right, so here's one, uh, another example here, just to show what the data look like. So in this case, I'm pushing. I'm sorry if the uh, refresh on the screen is too fast. We're pushing here, just locating some other things. And what you can see is as we're pushing, all right, we have a gas line over here. It's the bottom of the pavement. You have a little trench disturbance. You have a gas line here, and then you've got a power line right down here. And so here we can gain up. And now you can see that comes out a little bit more. Then we have this abandoned line over here. So you can actually see three targets, very simple data, good quality data, and then easy to manipulate your, your fields down here. All right, and one more example uh, to show everybody is it's gonna be a drainage line. You can see that actually this grate right there. And so for this drainage line, we're just pushing. And you can see where the drainage line is. So we have a really nice hyperbolic reflection response right here. Now, as you pull back, you'll see there's a little red line that comes back. And once that red line is bisecting the hyperbola, okay, you can actually move this little crosshatch up and down with these arrows, right? So now I'm too high, okay? I'm gonna go right to the top of my first one, and now that would be where the depth is. If I wanted to do a soil calibration again, I can do that. You can see the fit is actually still pretty good, so I'll leave it, and now it's giving me a depth of uh, uh, 2.82 feet. So that's really, really basic. That's how the LMX150 Find R works from sensors and software. Um, if we go back one more time, okay, and we go into, oops, sorry, I'll exit. We go into grid scan. We're not going to collect the grid, but it just allows you to create the grid that you want. All right, it gives you a couple different options. Grid size, right? You can do 20, a 10 by 10, 20 by 20, 30 by 30, 40 by 40. Those are the four options you have on the LMX system. And then resolution, right? You can do by one foot, a half a foot, a third of a foot, or your most coarse uh, would be two feet, right? So two feet by two feet, uh, one foot by one foot, half a foot by half a foot. But you can make your decisions you know, to go wider or smaller, once you're in there, you can select different um, lines to actually do. So once you build your grid, if you do a 40 by 40 and you're gonna do a 20 foot by two, uh, two foot by two foot spacing, and then you press start, right? If you had your grid laid out on the ground, you go to zero, zero, and it just tells you where to go. It says start at zero, zero and push this line. And when you finish that line, it just tells you to move over one line and it basically tracks you or, or guides you for the entire uh, grid. So that's it. I mean, that's the entire system. It's really simple to get started with. I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in a rental uh, for this uh, system, then please you know, give us a call or go to our website, bigmangeo.com. We'd love to help you. We appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. And subscribe.